round two, we've already seen Powder advance to the top four. Sixo eliminated. Today is single elimination, even though they yep. keep the decks and they yep. play best of five last year standing. But uh, this round right now, who's going to play? Uh, so this is the second game of the top eight. It's going to be between our two North American representatives, our two representatives from the good old USA. We've uh, made sure just to stack them up against each other in the first round of top eight. None of this uh, NA dominance. We're not going to have an NA final in our European tournament. Noxious, how do you feel about this European treatment of North American players? I think it's fine. We get a top four guaranteed, right? We can't get eliminated by I guess that's else, the so other way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah and like, I'm kind of rooting for um, the best of rogue players to mm -hmm. come on top. I want to say... Dog has been seen playing a lot more rogue than Zelay, but whenever I see Zelay play in a tournament, he's also playing rogue very frequently. So it's kind of tough to, I guess, pick a favorite here. Absolutely, and it, it, what's interesting, they actually have different rogue lists because yep. uh, Dog was playing the Mali, lo uh, Mali rogue, and then Zelay was having the shade in the oil rogue. So uh, a bit of a different approach, and we still are not clear how many shades is he running. Because he, he seemed to always have a shade on turn three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the shade of Nax Ramus tech in, in Oil Rogue is actually reasonably old. It was something that was tried out when Oil Rogue is, was first came out as a deck. Um, and the, the standard tech is just one shade. You know, you kind of just have this guaranteed target for oil. It's a great minion on turn three, but it's not really a consistent thing that you want to play over, you know, Farseers, SI agents, that sort of thing. But the fact that every single game he's queued up that deck, he just seems to have that turn three shade. So maybe there is two in the list. I have no idea. We'll have to ask him after yeah. And we talked a bit about the players. Let's see what the players have to say about themselves. Feels great to be through to the final eight. It's uh, weight off my shoulders. I went a little bit off the beaten path, just slightly with a few card choices this tournament. Um, did some kind of hipster, older tech choices. This tournament's one of the strongest I've ever played in. Like the number of great players here is. Absurd. Looking at the lineup, I didn't really uh, think I had great chances to make it this far. Like, I'm a good player. Uh, I'm better than most of the players, but uh, wow, there are a lot of really good players here. There's nobody I really fear in the top eight. Uh, I just take matches as they come, so I'll play whoever, whoever I have to. Good luck to my opponents. You might need it. Getting through the top eight feels pretty good, pretty good. The level of competition was pretty crazy. I mean, there were tons of big names here. You didn't have to just beat the big name once. You had to like beat a big name, and then you're like, oh my goodness, I hope I don't play against another big name. But of course you have to if you win, because you know, Swiss, if you're like 2-0, you play another 2-0, and most of the pros are, you know, getting good wins. So yeah, it was pretty stacked and really hard to get past Swiss. So I used to kind of get nervous or feel pressure coming to events, but I've been to so many at this point, it doesn't really phase me. I mean, I'm uh, pretty logical, I guess, and kind of just use that for my advantage. Other than that, I don't really ever get tilted, so it's good. So those guys had to go through a big Swiss, 100 plus people. Then they went through the group stages yesterday. And today they're focused on their specific opponent in front of them. So let's talk about the lineups first. Like, how do they look like versus each other? I mean, I feel like the rogues is, uh, like, because they play such a different type of rogue, I don't know which one I'd give the edge to. I want to say Malagos rogue is going to have a bit of trouble if it doesn't get enough time to get to that kind of miracle burst. Um, but of course, oil might sometimes have trouble if the Miracle Rogue ends up playing minions on curve, and you have to answer Gadatan after Gadatan into yeah. both. Uh, Generally, overall, I think the oil has the edge because, like you said, it just right. operates that bit quicker. It can just crush the the Miracle Rogue with tempo while they're taking the time to set up. So, I think one versus one, that there's definitely an advantage to Zelay's build of, of Rogue there, especially Shadenax Ramus. Again, if he does continue to get it early, is a very very strong minion against Rogue. If you can grow it out of range of potential blade flurries by getting it down early yeah. enough. Absolutely, but there's also this mage from Dog that we've seen yeah. yesterday, which is a tempo True. mage, and uh, Zelay brought uh, Druid. Mm -hmm. So that's a good matchup for Dog right there. Yeah, it lines up really well for Dog. Dog does also have the Control Warrior, I believe, which doesn't line up so well against the Druid. So there's lots of interactions, but the choice of Mage from Dog is really interesting. Um, one of the sacrifices that you have to make as a player coming into a format without a ban is um, Freeze Mage as a potential, because Freeze Mage is a, a much stronger deck in a format that has a ban available to you. So you can ban out Control Warrior, you can ban out Druid, these really heavily crushing matchups for Freeze Mage. Um, so when I saw Dog's lineup appear with the Mage portrait in it, I had a feeling it was going to be Tempo Mage, but that's really not a popular deck in the tournament. Um, generally, we've been seeing Warlocks, Druids, Paladins, Warriors, and then Rogue has kind of been the niche choice. It's been an outsider choice, but the players who brought it have done very well, as you can see two players right here in the top eight that have it.
Absolutely. Uh, Noxious, anything to add about the Warlock from Zalei's side on, or, or Warrior for Dog? No, I, I think the Warrior is really the biggest, uh, the biggest deck that Dog is going to have to pilot properly against Zalei, because the, the decks that Zalei is playing are all kind of okay against the Warrior. Even Rogue might struggle a little bit. It's got some crazy blowouts it gets sometimes, uh, and if it, especially if it gets a good tempo sap in the mid game and somehow snowballs off of it. So we'll have to see. How that pans out. Looks like we're going to be running to the Rogue Mirror right away. Yeah, we did hype up it a lot, and uh, right away they are starting with Rogue versus Rogue. So um, we touched upon it a bit, but who has the adv advantage here? Who is favored? Generally, I'd give the edge to Oil Rogue just because Killer. they don't have the, the need to um, you know, wait as long. They can just progress through the game, incremental tempo turn by turn, and they just operate a bit quicker. Their win condition comes a bit quicker than the Malagos Rogue. So Malagos Rogue, generally a rogue deck more aimed at um, beating control than it is against other tempo decks. So I'd give the edge to Zalay's Oil Rogue, but so far, no turn three Shade of Naxxramas available this time. His, his Shade has deserted him for this all-important top eight game. He still has a chance. He yeah. does. Yeah, Off one more draw. draw. Yeah. Okay, so let's evaluate the hands. Uh, there is no shade for Zalei, obviously. Uh, Donk. What's Garrison Auctioneer? That's it. Like, th with a hand like this, um, you want to stall as long as possible. Deal with the minions with your weapon, the fan of knives. Uh, ideally, not use up too many zero cost spells or cheap spells on the SI. And then, when Garrison comes out, you cycle to that Malagos and you just set up a crazy burst turn in the next few ones. So it's really tricky, though, because you can't pull off the trigger on Malagos really early like you could on some of the other charge combinations in the past. Yeah, I agree. It's one of the really turbulent things about Rogue in general. There's so many games I've played as Rogue, with Miracle Rogue in particular, where I'm just looking at my hand like, geez, my hand sucks right now. And then Gadgetan Auctioneer appears off the top. Right. And, oh, no, my hand's perfect. It's great. Right, let's go. Let's go. Best hand of my life. Yeah. I also wonder, like, um, before we, we talk more about Rogue versus Rogue, who won the mind games in this first match? Because in uh, Last Year's Standing, it's very important to... Uh, we start with a blind pick deck. Mm -hmm. So you want to snipe a specific matchup. You expect your opponent to start with the deck, and you want to have a counter. Uh, do you guys think uh, that Zalei won the, the mind games because he, he landed this uh, Oil Rogue versus Malagos? There's no bad matchup for that Oil Rogue, really. Like, there, is, right. there is a bad one-ish, but overall, I'd say it's still the deck that you're more likely to sweep with. If you're Zalei, so you start with that, and overall, no matter what happens, you're still going to be happy. Yeah, I think this is kind of just a dead heat in terms of the, the pick mind games, because both players will be feeling like it was a safe pick to lead with. It wasn't going to get hard counted too hard. And again, as Noxious said, it was also a deck that can possibly sweep. Uh, so I think the maybe Zalei's come out a little bit ahead, because if Dog was really on point, he could have queued up the Control Warrior into this Rogue, which would have been maybe the one favorable matchup was presented. But honestly, if I was a betting man, I think Rogue Mirror might have been a fairly safe prediction for what we were going to see overall. All right. Nice pick up there from uh, from Dog. Gets the Tomb Pillager on curve for next turn. Also keeping the coin and getting himself an extra one from that Pillager. And the Shade. Hello. Uh, one turn late, but not bad. Still early enough in the game to make some sort of impact, but may choose to instead to opt for the Violet Teacher here because it makes the Rogue on the other side dedicate an entire turn to removal or just face down a lot of tempo on the following turn. Yeah, that's true, but uh, Shade, uh, it's hard to answer if you play it this turn. And on the other hand, on the other turn, you can actually play Violet Teacher with preparation and eviscerate, uh, and eviscerate maybe that's to deal with a four drop. From, from the other side of that, you can also play Violet Teacher now, and then next turn you can play Shade of Nax Ramus Eviscerate without and keep hold of your preparation. So um, as always with Rogue, there is a lot of ways to tie together your turns and work out how to allocate your mana and the delay appears spot. to agree with you. Yeah, the tricky spot with that shade is if you let it go to 3-3 and then you play more minions, you're basically telling your opponent, please blade flurry me, right? <laughs> yeah. Whereas if you wait just a slight bit longer, you can get more mileage out of it. So it's really all about whether or not you value uh, or you expect the flurry uh, going off early. Right, and that, pretty much that exact situation you're describing is going to come up right now because Zalei is staring at the possibility of a Violet Teacher turn to remove this uh, this Tomb Pillager, and then he is going to be facing down the threat of Deadly Poison Blade Flurry from Dog. So, interesting to see whether he decides to hold back, maybe just to play around that Flurry a little bit. Yeah, how do you play around Flurry then? I might, I might not play around it, but I'm not committing a Teacher to this because if I give my opponent an extra coin, let's say I decide to go for Backstab SI, keep the weapon, or I go for just backstab trade with the weapon into the Tomb Pillager. Uh, that's the, you know, playing around flurry play. But if right. I want to commit to this board, I'm forcing Dog to use the flurry before he gets the Gadgetan out, which means it's not cycling, right? So 
that's yeah. kind of uh, there's like two ways to go about this. All right, he takes the risk and goes for the big tempo play with yep. preparation and eviscerate. Like but, this. But this will be punished by a deadly poison flurry. So uh, Zalei makes the assumption that there is no deadly poison flurry combination. Right. If, if you wanted to play around it, as Nox just pointed out, you know, backstab SI is just a little bit less of a commitment to the board overall. This is a stickier board to deal with, but if there is a deadly poison, Zalei knows full well that he can just attack the Violet Teacher first anyway. So Dog is going to stare at this pile of rogue cards in his hand, but I think he's going to quickly accept here that he's committed to the Blade Flurry. And honestly, like in some situations, you might be tempted to just wait and try and get more value here, but since this is the last turn, you can easily deal with that Shade of Naxxramas. It just seems like such a clear Blade Flurry turn yeah. to me. And you do get to read Dagger on the back of it by just uh, having that extra two mana left over. Right. Yeah. It's not half bad. Pretty juicy turn for Dog. He's going for the Deadly Poison, going to attack the Violet Teacher Flurry. And Zale, yeah, I hope you don't have it, but you do. What now? Yeah, you gotta be uh, hoping to find, what, a shredder from Zale's perspective, and even that doesn't feel too good. That's not a bad pickup, but it's got no real way to spawn one ones. Right, but he needs to take some sort of initiative on the board right now. You know, this is the thing, although I said at the start, like, oil has the advantage if they can tempo out and try and keep initiative. If they just give three turns over to the rogue player like this, then the the slower rogue will happily gobble up that free turn and just move closer and closer to that big win condition that they Absolutely. have later on. Yeah. So for Dog, now, uh, is looking for that gadget hand. It, it looks really good for Dog. Like even without gadgets, and uh, he still has a lot of tools to stall the game and uh, just build up the board. And if he gets uh, minions like uh, Violet Teacher and Belcher that are unanswered, um, he will just win with those minions. Yeah, Dog is playing the oil game, right? Yeah. And it works for him so far. That's kind of the strength of this uh, Miracle Rogue list that, uh, that has come up. I remember when Miracle Rogue shifted from a heavy combo deck to more of a tempo minion based deck. Right. And this is basically what it is nowadays. And so you can tell here that it doesn't sacrifice too much to include the extra card draw from, yeah, from Miracle. Yeah, I remember when Leroy was first nerfed and uh, Forsen made this big climb to top 10 legend with like no win condition Miracle Rogue. And, yeah. You know, people were just in stream chat like saying, how does this deck win? It's like, well, surprise, you win by having good minions on the board. You draw, and how's that? Yeah. Yeah, you draw good. your deck and you keep board control. Like that's a really sick strategy. It still works without like a huge charge minion combo to win the game. And now a Sap and Sludge Belcher is not a great tempo swing for Dog. Just uh, Zalei with three minions in hand looking really bad. Well, he does have uh, a decent curve next turn to contest the board. The flurry is already out of the way, so Dog is slowly but surely running out of cards, right? Like, we just want to point this out. There's no sprint he can prep with. He's got to be Gadotan to, to go crazy with, and this is an interesting turn for Zalei. So the, the quality of Zalei's hand is through the roof right now, right. but they're all so slow and clunky, one card at a time. You know, he can do Teacher Shredder if he wants to, but it's just not putting up any sort, any sort of defense, so it's just... Such an awkward looking hand. It was Dog with the, the slower, clunkier deck that actually got the bigger tempo plays with the Blade Flurry, key timing on SI Agent, you know, all this big stuff that's able sap to... as well. Yeah, the Sap as well, exactly. Yeah, right now Dog is in a situation where he doesn't even need Maligos. That's pretty good though. Gets himself uh, some extra damage if he wants later on. Kills the Shredder right away. This needs to be big. And it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's disappointing. Well, Doc can just start going for face here, I think. Uh, I think it just takes a single Blade Flurry top deck for Zelay to just take this game. Uh, it's very close. It's not It's not too far off. Yeah, you're right. He still has a dagger up. So, um, it's, it's, so I think, yeah, Dog was considering with the, the merits of, with the Sinister Strike in his hand, just going full face there, whether that set up any additional outs. But I think he's considered just uh, trading into the one. Crazy the pick up there. The safest thing. Yeah, Sinister Strike is a, a good card to have because if he gets Malagos at any time of the game, he'll be able to just uh, deal eight damage. And uh, with the weapon attacks, it should be enough. So even with a big flurry, if uh, it gives a couple of turns to Doc, he might just win right there. But uh, for now, there's no flurry. There is no flurry, but as Nox just said, the sap is a really big deal here because it allows him to address this board much more efficiently than he was able to before. So sap the free five, kill the free three with the... Actually, weapon attack right now is a bit tricky, just going down to seven. You can't. You just right. 
Yeah, I think you have to sacrifice the health on your Violet Teacher into the 3-3, three, three, kill one of the smaller minions with your, with your dagger, and then uh, protective, you know, either of the five drops will offer you protection against various outs from your opponent, so you have to decide whether taking a little bit extra damage from the, what, the minion that's left on board is, is worthwhile, and whether you'd rather block out the spells from Lotheb against what is obviously an extremely spell-focused deck from your opponent. Yeah, oh, man, this is so close. To, to like the, the game is close to get finished because for dog it's just like uh, whoa all right oh, this brave is man. damage right there. wow brave man this is very it's this it ballsy I, there must be healing in that deck we know it for a fact that's the way all plays but this is it that. got him <laughs> that's enough with the shift to damage sinister strike doing four and weapon attack and then do the attack jug is just doing the math well no there's a sludge oh, sludge belcher. Belcher. Oh, there's how a does he belcher. win yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, i was right. confused for a second okay there's a talk the shift could give the win right shift, yeah. shift still gives some outs but he's short because of the sludge belcher uh both options would have locked it out this turn obviously lothab would have prevented the the use of spells dog gonna go here and prep the shiv in order to increase his uh, total amount of mana increase his number of outs and, and he picks up and eviscerate now it's does enough for job. sure that'll nice. do it. i got cheated by taunt again uh, it happens we all know oh, he is in fact <laughs> cheating Nim, yeah. so it's fine well yeah, that takes it such, yeah that, that was the, a very impressive game and now malilok actually st uh, Mali rogue Mali lock it doesn't uh, Malilok just doesn't flow naturally. right Mal Mal like rogue Ma Mali recall Mal Malerical, I like it. Malerical. Let's go with that. Malerical is okay. Yeah. It's really easy to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, I just like uh, the, the list the dog is playing. It's kind of a decent deck to bring if you expect a nice mix of control decks um, to be kind of sprinkled in there to come to the secret paladins and uh, some of the more aggressive shaman lists that you think are going to be there. Yeah, now with Doom Pillager as well, it seems like. Um, I think that the list was really successful on ladder. I, I, Nyria was getting top uh, top level uh, top legend places with with this specifically, so uh, it works. And uh, how does it work versus Druid? Again, similar thing to the Rogue Mirror. Really, is just because it operates a little bit slower than a standard Rogue list. You know, you really do need to make sure you draw the right half of your deck. You don't want to be sat around with Malagos and Emperor and Gadgetan Auctioneers early on while they're just dropping minion after minion against you. And you know, SI agents are a nice thing to have, but he's going to need some decent activators to go with them. But you know, the early tempo cards, basically what he got early in that Rogue Mirror, is exactly the same sort of thing he's going to be looking for here. Yeah, there's a little bit of a worry here from uh, Zalay thinking, well, you know. I have to dodge Phantom Knights, I have to dodge the Flurries, I've got to dodge some of those explosive backstab SI starts. The coin being on the rogue side makes you as well very worried if you're Zelay. Right. Yeah, definitely. This is the second time Dog actually got the coin in the previous game he had it as well. Yep. So it's, it's when you know you're a good rogue player is that you know how to mulligan for the coin. Like I that's, like that. That's yeah. pretty solid. <laughs> well, I can always get an extra coin from Tomb Pillager. That's very true as well. I want to take a moment to talk about Darnus' Aspirant here as well, because this was a card that had mostly cycled out of Druid a little while ago, generally players agreeing that it was too easy to mulligan against. It was activating cards like Fiery War Axe and Frostbolt and etc. that weren't particularly good against Druid before. Um, but I remember listening to Firebat talk about the change and the shift of taking out of the deck. And he said that what Darnassus Aspirant will become as the meta evolves is a surprise card. Wait, when everyone's forgotten about Darnassus Aspirant, then you bring it back into your deck. And it's amazing for one tournament because everyone's forgotten about it. And this tournament, we've seen a ton of Aspirant back in Druid, which, you know, is just by about the Prophet again. He's a fantastic analyst of Hearthstone in general and kind of predicted this entire rotating thing from day one. Absolutely. It is a surprise, but then uh, this turn was super good for Dog. Yeah, picked up the flurry off the top. Might have been Phantom Knives as well. Both would have worked in a very similar fashion. And suddenly, it doesn't look that great for Zalei. He gets Lothip, so it's at least something he can play, but he will need to spend uh, Innervate. So, uh... Might you wait. Might you wait. Um, just looking at the hand here, can we have a talk about swiping face this turn? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right? Like if you swipe now, you've curved into Lotheb, keep that innervate, get right. combo off. So you do four damage this turn with the swipe. Lotheb is almost a guaranteed five on the following turn, so you're already down pushing him down to 13, and then you already have a Savage Roar in hand to back that up as well. It doesn't seem like the worst idea in the world, but I can get behind the Lotheb as well, for sure. Yeah, well, the Lotheb Swipe works well here. Swipe will basically um, should be really good versus Doom Pillager if you expect Doom Pillager on 4, which is generally what you expect, expect versus the deck. 
And Lothar, uh, if it survives for two turns, will deal two damage overall. Right. This actually makes sense, too, because you almost guarantee the damage out of Lothar better this way, because if you were to do it the other way around, swipe face, then your opponent plays Tomb Pillager, suddenly your Lothab's a lot worse, whereas getting the Lothab down ahead of the Tomb Pillager means this swipe can now back it up. So yeah. This yeah. makes a lot of sense, too. It gives you an out against uh, Gaddison Auctioneer as well if it comes in a few turns away from now. Well, it looks like the double SI turn is going to take care of this. Yeah, it's quite good. Uh, there is a wrap for one of them. I just want to point out, Dog is awfully yeah, close to, good, you know, combo good. lethal. So right now, he needs to get damage in quickly. He's got a few turns, and that that is really close. That is a really clutch draw, yeah. But this is kind of the, as you said, he's close to combo lethal, but this is the byproduct of that doing that previous turn the way around he did it, is that it cost right. him an innovate. So he's he's close to combo lethal in terms of damage, but an extremely long way in terms of draws and mana. Whereas the innovate would have let him speed up his, his turn a little bit. But all things considered, with the threat of the Tomb Pillager coming down on turn four, I think he sequenced those turns correctly. He's just gonna have to push through the damage little by little here instead of just going for the big combo burst. A really, really good call by Zalei going uh, four to face with the, with the cat. And uh, even if he doesn't draw the combo specifically on turn nine, he might just go into like force of nature phase with uh, another druid of the claw phase so he'll be getting closer and closer with the next turns yeah i mean right now i would consider blade flurry play with one of the si's going down because that way you get to develop this uh, tomb villager you still get the coin out of it if you sap this you're taking damage again so unless you think you can seal the game in the next two turns uh, so Dog was just counting, so he's pushing him down to 22 this turn, and then he has the threat of 11 more on board, taking him down to 11, down to 10 with the weapon attack. Sinister Strike puts him down to 7, so he's not quite there, but I guess he's just calculating that all things considered, draws, draws left in him for the deck and potential outs in his opponent's hand. This is a race that he's going to win from this position. Right. Yeah, swipe, swipe swipe picks up a swipe though. to face hero power that is 5 damage, puts down to 7, which means Drew the Claw and Savage Roar on turn 8 will, yeah, will be enough. Correct. Will be enough to win. Uh, did we see any heals for Dog in his deck? Not that I remember. Uh, but there probably belcher. would be a Belcher to stall. Yeah. Well, hopefully for Dog. If not, he's. Uh, I've seen dead. Belcher, yeah. It's just. And it's, it's important from Zalay's side that if he knows the deck list, if he's done research on what's in it, he needs to sequence his plays against um, Lotheb and Sludge Belcher in particular. If he knows one of those is in the list and the other isn't, then that has a huge effect on which order you play minions and spells in in order to achieve two-turn uh, two lethal. But he's just going to go ahead, bank that four damage to face with the Druid of the Claw now and try and use the swipe later on to back up the damage. So Interesting. So he, but he's not setting up to turn lethal. Right, but he is, however, keeping the swipe on the off chance that Gadget's hand comes out and needs to handle it and keeps the Savage Roar as insurance. If he picks up a second Druid of the Claw, picks up a uh, Force of Nature, he thinks he can get away with it. He's not completely wrong. I'd probably just use the Eviscerate now over the Blade Flurry, right? No, he's going to go ahead and use the Flurry, fair enough. Well, it makes sense in the way that um, Eviscerate can uh, go through the taunt and uh, there's only two cards in Druid's hand. Sure. All right, that's a pretty decent pickup. It looks like one if you're Zalei. Yeah, so you swipe Gadget Sun, you play Shredder to accompany it. You do have to get a little bit lucky, though. I can't help, uh, I can't shake the feeling that going for that two turn lethal may have been a little bit more optimal. Even in a spot like this, even knowing Belcher's in, going all in may have been uh, safer. Right, I think like. He maybe respected the threat of lethal coming back the other way a little With bit too hard from his opponent, yeah. but like if you put himself, put yourself in his shoes for a second. Oh, oh man! Oh, wow, that heal bot is huge. But um, just to finish that thought, like put yourself in Zalay's shoes for a second. He saw his opponent sap a druid of the claw charge and just give you give it give you damage back in your hand to set up a board and then go face. So if you see that play from your opponent. The, the idea in your head is like, okay, he's setting up his own lethal here. Right. That's the only reason he'd ever do well, that. So also possibility of the the heelbot and Sludge Belcher right. from Liquid Dog. Exactly. Just. Uh, I think that's right. Like, the, if you know there's a heelbot and a Belcher in that list, then of course that reduces tremendously the amount of times you'll be able to go face straight up. So charging first means that you're going to get the damage in. Yeah, makes sense. And now you don't really have much choice. Um, well, the choice is Shredder, Savage Roar, Hero Power, Face and hope you top deck Force of Nature. That's what I see. I don't think there's much uh, much merit to start trading away with that Savage Roar. Yeah, you have probably just only one more turn. Is there any merit in killing the free two? 
or if... Uh, I mean, you have to do at least one damage to face this turn, right? right? Like, what's your win condition if you don't set them to 14? So, I mean, in that case, like, do you even bother using a Savage Roar here, or do you just hear a power face? Like, it's, it's really awkward, but it looks like Zelay is going to commit to a bit of a ball control strategy here, which is... The idea is I want to keep well. my Shredder alive. Right. And if I get that Savage Roar to work with the two drop that comes out, I might still be able to pull it off. Dog doesn't quite have lethal, but he needs to... Never mind, picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did he pick it up? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's really good. Yeah, it's 11, I believe, total, yeah. Oh, oh no, man. without the Drake. Okay, so he, he could have... Uh, go, oh, he's out of mana. Never mind. That game was it's really close. That game was really close. If Zale would go for the two-turn lethal, he would win. But uh, we can't play him there. Like, he, he made a correct play, correct decision, uh, knowing what's in the deck. Uh, but uh, I mean, we we don't know if it's the correct play, but we know that what that Zelay was afraid of what yeah. was coming over. As we talked about, you know, the sap on the charge minion indicates that Dog is probably going to be able to start, like take that four damage again, maybe right. get back in the game on the back of it. Uh, yeah, I, th I think all problem. things considered, he did he does make the right play. You know, right. we have this unfair advantage as casters of being able to see the situation and like. Yeah, you know, there was a game yesterday where we could all see where you know JJ just hellfires, then he wins the game, but he chose to play Malagos. That was potentially a bit more questionable, but we have to kind of get out of the trap of casters of just saying, oh, this was right because of what we can see in hand. I think overall, on average, what Zelay chose to do there was probably correct in most right. most situations. Absolutely. And now game number three, still this Malagos Rogue versus Zoo from Zelay. Do you guys remember what specific build of Zoo that was? I believe it's Void Cooler again. Um, I, I know it's the most common we've seen. I think I remember Zelay specifically using it, but it has just, if we were to, to take a guess on average, it's been the most common build that we've seen. But I think I do actually remember the Zelay specifically playing the Void Cooler build. And Dog is getting coin again. Yeah, pretty good when you're a rogue player to sweep with a triple coin rogue. Coin rogue. I have to Makes wonder sense. though, if there could be a way for, to set up tournaments and that players alternate the coin uh, ownership. Ooh. Because that might be a way to equalize some of the... Maybe in a tournament no. mode. Then there's actually like a pick order strategy, right? Where right, if you have like you Tempo Mage or Rogue exactly. in your thing, like... Exactly, you get to yeah. choose a specific deck that works a little bit better Yeah, it'd be kind of cool, actually. With the coin, so... Maybe in the future when we have the tournament mode. <laughs> 2020, not happening. I like Enoch, just like a mad genius. You just throw these ideas out there. Sometimes they're madness. Sometimes there's just nuggets of gold. Well, once in a while, uh, you can use some of it. Right. <laughs> uh. Well, we got more deck slots. Oh, God. Hey. I lost nine basic decks is what happened. Oh, poor Nox. Um, so pretty standard stuff here. Zoo with a couple of early minions. And uh, this is about the turn where Rogue wants to start fighting back onto the board. Coin SI Agent with a second SI Agent in hand is pretty fantastic if he can pick up a spell to go with that preparation at some point. Yeah, it looks really good for Dog already. And um, this matchup overall is, uh, I think, close to 50-50. But if the Rogue gets this kind of opening in the coin, it's, uh, it swings in a... For, for Rogue, it's, it's really good. Yeah, this is a decent follow-up for Zelay. If he can just dodge some of the AoE that might be present, um, given that his turn four can consist of either a big 4-4 four four or gets himself a few pings off the Night Juggler, uh, you know, minion spawning from the egg or the creeper. Yeah, good old DID in Zelay's hand. You know, generally, most versions of Zoo, it's been rotated out of these days. It came back in for a while, but now most people are resorting to yep. the, the flashier options of the Enhancos and the Gormox, etc. But Dark Iron Dwarf, just such a solid dude, just to be able to play as a 4-4, four, four, a reliable effect, just a simple plus two buff abusive sergeant style. One of my favorite Zoo cards, honestly. I think it's just a really solid uh, overall card to have in the deck. Especially with, with Brown Bronzebeard as well, yeah, sure. uh, can, can work like double buff. Yeah, it's a bit tricky spot though, because if you play the dwarf on this spot and you end up trading into the abu the uh, the SI, you're leaving yourself very vulnerable to a fan of knives. So you have to play smaller minions with two health, as opposed to giving your opponent the ability to just clean up everything for one mere damage. There was a possibility to maybe buff the egg and go uh, with the egg and the spider into one of the SIs, so you have a double four four. Even if there's a fan of knives, uh, one of the four fours with. Ooh, and that one. Sorry, that was really intelligent sequencing from Zelay. It may have seemed obvious to send the two attack creeper into the 3-2 SI7 agent, but by doing it the other way, he meant meant the initial knives had a two out of three chance of hitting minions instead yeah. of a 50 As opposed 50s. to doing it the, uh, the other way around. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks to that, he was able to clear. There is the Blade Flurry, but no, no weapon, weapon equipped. God. That feels bad. So what do you do here? Do you just go for the bigger, biggest minion being... Violet Teacher. 
I feel like you have to play for board until you get a semi-decent turn to clean everything up. And this basically gives you a coin for this, uh, you know, a better play. Yeah, you can I, play I, the, the teacher and then coin out the weapon. Right, yeah, I agree with the sequencing because it, it, using the coin now as a follow-up can potentially give you a quicker turn, get you a swingier turn with Violet Teacher and that preparation later on in combination with the coin. So he's going to sacrifice a bit of initiative right now just to get that one big swing that he needs later on. Yeah. Who knows, maybe Gadgetan has played with a Hail Mary. If, if things get even more dire, there's always the coin Gadgetan into prep. Please give me something good. Yeah. Into <laughs> please Bam. win the game. Yeah. So Implosion going to come down here, so a ton of damage being pushed through this turn. Does get the four roll as well, not a huge deal, but the big thing is that his board is full. Three more knives are getting thrown, so he is putting on the pressure really hard right now. Yeah, it's actually a lot of damage there, and uh, he still has summonings in hand. If there is this big flurry coming, uh, there will be a way to deal with this, but there is no weapon buff still. Uh, well, there's a dagger play with Eviscerate that kind of cleans up the board, not quite completely, but it's almost there. Can you go for Violet Teacher this turn? Uh, I think it's, there's too much mana commitment, I believe. Even with the prep on top of that, Not you don't enough. have enough to get through. So, yeah, I believe the only thing you can do here that's even vaguely reasonable is the Blade Flurry plus Eviscerate turn, which feels miserable. You're still just handing complete initiative back to your opponent, but it's all that you have right now to stay alive, really. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you if your Gadotsan can land the other prep as fan of Knives, and then you pick up... That's a lot. Yeah, sure. yeah, like we're talking the the, the the most like the most RNG play ever. Right. Otherwise, uh, this is the safest play he can ever make. And again, yeah. the only reasonable one, right? Yeah, but now only three more damage. Yeah, again, like the, the explosive charge from Zelay, despite the double SI and the coin being on his opponent's side of the board. Well, Lothab is really solid as well. I think this is an auto play. You can squeeze in more damage right now with the abuse, uh, the Dark yeah. Iron Dwarf. He blocked the spell, so what is Ro going to do? Uh, Sludge Belcher is probably his best bet, or something like a heal bot. It wouldn't be enough anyway. He yeah, we up. saw almost that exact situation come up before, where it's like, okay, Ro Zoo just needs a few points of damage. So many cards are lethal here. Lotheb's not lethal. I oh, know, Lotheb is pretty Lo much lethal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Essentially lethal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those cards that just locks out rogues more, I think, than any other class, really. Right. I mean, rogue was a huge concern in the design of that card. It's one of the big reasons why it was printed, because Miracle Rogue was so dominant at the time. Even though they introduced other cards at the same time, like Bomb Lobber, that were dealing with the Gadgetan Conceal problem, they still pu pushed that Lotheb into the game. And it's interesting now that so many people were happy to see it originally. It's like, yes, we have an answer to Miracle Rogue. And now, with it rotating out, everyone's like, yes, Lotheb's gone. That card's so annoying. <laughs> Finally, it can play Rogue on yeah. the All right, guys, game number four, then. Um, Zoo remains. And Zalei has to win two more games with that Zoo. He cannot change the deck. And I think uh, he's happy with his hand, though. Yeah, definitely. And especially versus, this is Contra Warrior, right? Yep, the Elise Warrior deck with a yep. lot of removal, double brawl. Uh, probably double brawl, I'm saying. Yeah. So we'll see whether or not he's able to get the zoo under control. But this is a pretty slow hand. He's happy to get the death spite, but otherwise, if things snowball and he doesn't pick up removal, it's gonna get dirty uh, pretty quick. So we talked about this matchup a bit when uh, we've seen Sixo playing. He had uh, he was playing the Sea Giant version, but overall, um, from Zale's perspective, he just needs to pressure, pressure, never play around the second row, and uh, just lifed up as well at uh, starting from turn five, possibly, to just outvalue the warrior. Right. It's a point I've made to a few people just around the venue talking about matchups this week. I think like a lot of people lose to this removal warrior deck by playing around the second brawl too much. Like, they respect, they now that they have the full knowledge that two brawls are in the deck, they just respect the second one way too much. And I think there's a point where you can just push in and expect that most of the time they're not going to have drawn both their brawls. Right. That's really important when you're playing a minion focused deck. I would like to see Rel Relic Quarry Seeker. Unfortunately, no Seeker here, but uh, I think Seeker actually has some value in this matchup as well. Even though people think like, yeah, Warrior has so much removal. Mm -hmm. But if you get, a, if you land a good implosion and you play Seeker as a 5-5, then uh, without Brawl, it's actually a troublesome card to deal with. Yeah, you do have to play a little bit more of the Flood uh, variants, right? So this is what a lot of people are running nowadays. I have to wonder, though, if this one drop... Because you, you have Peddler for that Seeker. Occasionally, you'll find it and still get a decent uh, play with it. Yeah. Sometimes, however, it's a dead card. And you can't expect the entire metagame to shift, perhaps, a Secret Paladin, where maybe you're able to keep some of that. Absolutely. Up. Here, I think Voidwalker is a pick because weapons. So I like, like Priestess. I like, I like both. I think if there was no War Axe, Either of those are fine picks. Sure. 
Yeah, and you've already seen the fact the War Axe did not come down. So, you know, if you're planning around weapons, you're planning around Death Spite. So the Void Walker makes sense to come down next turn to lock out the potential Death Spite from your opponent. Right. Looks like pretty okay turn, but it's not going to be a stellar one. If this Flame Imp hadn't been dealt with, this turn looked gross. But given that the damage output will be a little smaller... Would you, would you guys tap here? Like, life tap and then uh, go abusive Void Walker, I guess, with the coin? Because... Uh, Get the implosion on four and then... Yeah, you, you have a good play on four. Like, I, either Gormok without dealing damage just being a 4-4 a four, four body or, or just an implosion on something. I mean, you have to consider that the, the Warrior's play here is most likely Death Spite. You right. still kept a card and you haven't seen Doomsayer, Fiery War Axe, like any of these cards that you keep as a fatigue, as a removal warrior. So Death Spite is going to come down here. So if your intention on turn four is to play Implosion or That's a 4 bad. 4 Gormok um, after using the coin, both of those plays are terrible against potential Death Spite. So. The Life Tap does give you more options after that Death Spite comes Right, up. exactly. Good pick up there. At least it'll survive uh, the AoE effect on its own. Yeah, so what do you do now? Like, Gormok is terrible in a way, but it's still for damage to face if, um, if Dog decides to attack into it. Peddler will, will survive. Yeah, it's difficult because the, the Flame Imp abusive sergeant turn is like the benefits of that you get another life tap in to start filling up this hand with some actual proactive stuff because you don't really have a lot going on right now. Um, but yeah, Gormok just as a 4 4 body does get chopped down immediately, but Flame Imp Abusive doesn't really do a whole lot better. The Didn't tiniest extra bit of removal will clear the board from there as well. That's a good pick up there. He's actually able to protect right. the two health minions. Yeah, that's really nice. The initial attack. Well, the high attack minions, rather. And I like that Zalei is tapping so much because we can already see uh, that he has card advantage over Dog. Like, Dog will be trying to remove this board as, as fast as possible, but at some point he will just run out of cards. Yeah, absolutely, and he's considering whether it's even worth using the Death Bite Swing here, and it probably isn't, just because it's such a such a terrible use of one of the most valuable resources in your deck, which is the second swing of Death Bite. So I'm just going to try and wall things out with the Sludge Belcher, and now Zalay's getting to the point where his hand's actually coming together reasonably nicely here. Yeah, Gormok is live. You just go for Abusive into Gormok. You can deal with the Owl Belcher. into Coin Gormok. <laughs> Owl, Coin Gormok, go ham, yeah. Do you like Owl or Abusive? Um, I like Abusive more. So if, uh, Nimch, in your world, what's, what's the Abusive doing? Like, wh where's, how's the damage being broken up here? So basically what I do here, I just, um, I probably use my Flame Imp to trade into the free 5 So I might go four damage to face with Gormok, mm -hmm. uh, then kill the Belcher with the free 5 with the 5-2. Fi I like this a tiny bit better, because the problem with that play is that you put a minion on one health right. that you don't have to necessarily, whereas now you're keeping minions a little bit healthier against the AoE from the Death Bite, but again, the revenge! Right, you the know, reason... Stack that. The reason I was considering the, the Owl play is that I didn't like the, the one health thing that you said, Noxious, because your way, Nimsh, was the first way that I looked at it as well, but Zalei found a better way to trade there that set up his board much more effectively against the Death Bite, so I like this line a lot better, keeping the Owl for, for future use later on. Yeah, definitely. What are the owl targets in the future, by the way? Uh, Acolyte of Pain, possibly? Armor Smith, perhaps. Yeah, there's Armor Smith or Doomsayers as a two drop that both can potentially be owl. There's a second Belcher, there's Death Lords potentially as well. So all of these things can. Uh, yeah, the owl can definitely get some use in the later turns. Sylvanas as well as a preemptive brawl wow. setup. Yeah, Sylvanas is probably the strongest uh, right. Sylvanas target. Yeah. And again, here, Zale is basically looking at this death by never going off. And Dog will hold on to it as long as he can, given that he has the revenge to complement the one damage AoE, making it a two damage AoE. It's only weak, perhaps, against an M Gang boss. Um, but even then, you know, if you're able, if there's no taunt to protect the M Gang boss, you still get a clean clear. Yeah, but now he still has a good turn with the coin. Uh, M Gang boss and Defender Vargas go free damage to face. And then uh, M Gang boss will die to the death spread attack, but uh, the, the free two will not. I need, uh, like, the just deck. Argus on the 2-1 here, just yeah. out of curiosity. Very boring part. Uh, like it's a boring turn, but I, I feel like it, it accomplishes right. uh, almost as much. Uh, but given that you've seen a brawl, you know, you don't play around the second one, you've got the revenges, you know they're going to be coming out. Is this Death Bite hold indicative of this so hard that you have to play around it? Yeah, it's interesting, right? I mean, I, like... Playing him gang boss and just protecting it behind the 3-2 the, the abusive sergeant seemed like a reasonable line that turn as well. You push the same amount of damage because obviously the him gang boss wasn't attacking and you prevent that death spike from getting a really nice swing into it. So um, I think that was an interesting consideration that Zalay may have taken there, but he just wanted to buff up the stats on his him gang boss as well.
Uh, look yeah, at definitely. the AoE here. It's the gone. The thing is, like, every damage matters in this, uh, in this matchup, and whenever uh, weapons are dealing with your minions, Warrior is taking that damage sure. and getting right. lower, especially because he has power for roaming and Doomguard in the in hand as well. He needs to push for the damage, but uh, after the revenge gun and brawl gun, he probably go for implosion here. Yeah, exactly. It feels safe to go for it. Like you've seen way too much of that AOE to, to keep on waiting. Yeah. So Zalei is going with that implosion. There is obviously a second revenge. Misses. Not the greatest hit. Now, does this actually make him question whether or not he should use this damage as face? Because ultimately, if you're trading into Harrison Jones, you're giving the warrior two extra health and losing yourself a minion. Whereas if you play the Creeper, it's worse if he's got a second revenge. Because in that case, his clean is, uh, is very... I mean, he gets a clean clear and you're back to square one. Yeah. I like the trade here. Just nice. to deal with the 5-2. Because uh, okay. if, if this Harrison would Whoa, come back to face, okay. you go down to 15, and then suddenly you might be in the death spite into Grom range. Right. I was about to say, I don't think Dog is going to think about this turn too hard. Right. It was just Justicar hero power, and then boom, came flying off the top, and suddenly there was a decision to be made. And I think this is absolutely the correct decision just to get the 7-7 seven, seven and the boom bots into play right now. Well, a little bit... Uh Awkward mana wise, but you still have a decent turn if you're Zalei. The thing is, those boom bots could make this turn go absolutely wrong if you don't take care of them prior. They definitely can as well, and you have to give a certain amount of respect to that 7 7 as well because uh, the threat of Grom on following turns, if that 7 7 just connects to face once right now, then you're suddenly under threat of Grom for the rest of the game. So, if we could pick up here. Yeah, Dark Peddler can definitely provide some additional options here. If he picks up an Abusive Sergeant, he can deal with this Dr. Boom just with one imp here using Implosion and the Abusive... Uh, sorry, using Power Overwhelming and the Abusive Sergeant. Yeah. So. The yeah. question is, do you play Juggler? And if you do, I imagine you would have to at least trade one of the imps prior to make sure that the Boom Bots don't go completely insane. Mm -hmm. Unless you go for the... Uh, he is going for some of the some trades, I see. Yeah. Just going to max out on board presence here, use the owl to take care of one of the boom bots, but also just to get a 2-1 into play more than anything to max out on the board. Like I said, he's seen one brawl now, so he knows that he can't afford to play around the second one. He needs to max out on the board on every turn he can now and just push the initiative. Yeah. Also, oh wow, this weapon um, sets lethal yes, into it does. This is a huge weapon, actually. Shield bearer, Dark Peddler, let's do this. I mean, this is actually a really tough decision for Dog because he has to make the choice here between setting up the two-turn lethal of his own or using those same cards to react to the board now or making a defensive play with just a car. So um, definitely the, the brave play here is just to swing for the fences with that fiery war axe, connect it with Goldan's smug-looking face and put him out of his misery right now. But I can understand the, the, the temptation to make the defensive play here as well. I mean, you still clean up the entire board no matter what, right? Yeah, but this, this defensive play is not bad anyway because without Juggler, it's only four damage and you're at right. 19. So what is Zoo going to do from three cards in hand? Yep, so we're four damage on board if you play Peddler and you get the Doom Guard. He needs to get the Void Walker. Yeah, well, he needs to find the Shield Bearer, Void Walker. Yeah. Those are pretty much the only one drop. What's the Tap into Argus. Yeah, tournament yeah, no, attendee, tournament attendee has to but it won't dies. Work, right. It will die to the revenge. Yeah. Exactly. Th there is still one more Defender of Argus in the deck, I believe. We've seen one. Yes, I believe you're right. We have only seen one. So uh, I think there is also a natural Void Walker left in the deck as well, so he can do that way. So he has a couple of opportunities here to pick up a Taunt. I think he can get the read fairly comfortably, can delay that this is a lethal setup from Dog. So yeah. uh, he will be trying to find a solution here as best as he can. Zalei has a lot of damage himself, the Soulfire and Doomguard play. That's 9 plus, what, 4 on board? 13, it's not quite there, though. You really do need to find the Taunt. Thing is, there is nothing that would kill you from 13, from uh, from I like 10 that doesn't kill you already. From uh, also with the weapon to face, you know something something is coming. You know Grimash is there, and yep. that would be so it. Zalay is just going to slam that Doom Guard. Hope that the uh, hope against hope that Dog does not have the damage. But we can see Grom plus Revenge for the 10 plus the War Axe is going to get the job done. Great performance from Dog overall. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, on the back of this Grimash attack. Dog is advancing to top four and eliminating Zale from the tournament. A good run for uh, Archon Zale, but Dog is the one who's advancing. Yeah, looks like Maligos uh, Rogue did a lot of work. I really liked to see that deck in action. It turned out that the, the first mirror match with Rogues 
played a lot more like oil in regular tempo right. than the Malagos version that I expected. And it was perfect timing as well because it was up against matchups that weren't all about that big late game win condition. You know, we didn't see Malagos come into play once in the games that he won. He just won it through early game tempo, much like Malagos Warlock can do that we've seen about it, seen it do this this weekend already. So. Right. That's the, that's the important part of the deck is that they're built up as these effective mid-game tempo decks that then have this win condition that they can use just to beat control when the decks get that far. Absolutely. Also, this last game where you have Control Warrior versus Zoo, which is normally a very good matchup for the Zoo, um, Dog was playing really in, a, in an exceptional way, just using removal as much as possible. And he got one bro only, he didn't get the second one, but Revenge was their key. One use, uh, being used to clear the board and the second one as an activator to just win the game. Yeah, I feel like that Dr. Boom top deck, they'll really sped up the clock on that game uh, because the Justicar True Hard would have been a very defensive play, but it didn't quite win you the game uh, immediately. Whereas Dr. Boom just came down and suddenly Zalea was thinking, well, I have to waste so much damage into that minion that suddenly I'm never going to be able to reach him and I'm going to have to play the long game. There's no way I can right. beat a, uh, a warrior to that long game. Right, Dr. Boom dictated the pace, basically. Pretty much. Right? Like, it, it took it from a defensive situation to an offensive situation. It's just the power of Dr. Boom, one of the reasons why so many people will be happy to see that card leave. <laughs> Me the first of them. Right, it, but like, you know, think Certainly. about what happened, right? From a position where he was behind, and he, he was he picked up the Justicar card, ready to be like, okay, I need to make the defensive play here. And then suddenly, Boom coming off the top changed everything. And it was just like, okay, well, now I can just set up the win for myself because I have the, the power of of boom on my side. I can't wait to see if Hogger is good enough in decks like Patron, where it's in, like, it, it seems pretty good in those decks. The Corrupted uh, Hogger? Or corrupted Hogger. Corrupted right. Hogger, yeah. Because you look at the version that it, like the, the amount of nulls it spawns, and it feels like it's balanced, because you do have to try mm -hmm. to make those nulls appear. With Dr. Boom, you don't really try too much. Uh, and I want to see whether or not a card like this is going to be powerful enough to replace in some of the lists uh, a card like Dr. Boom. I really like Dr. Boom. Tackle Hogger Warrior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like Corrupted Hugger, Patron Warrior. I, I I'd like to see that. A lot of people have made the, the um, comparison to Trogzor with, with that card, right? But I think it's different because with that card, you actually have initiative to create stuff yourself, right? right? Like, you're not relying on your opponent to do something to make you the dudes, but... Anyway, Theory Craft for the new set comes I'm in. I'm happy, Dr. Time. Boom's out. We have a pretty massive tournament right, right. now. It's exciting stuff. And as you can see on your stream right now, the coming up next is a game I'm personally very excited about. Ness versus Life Coach, our one remaining UK representative in the tournament.